A couple years ago, I had the opportunity to travel to Beirut, Lebanon to give a talk. It was an amazing experience. I fell in love with the city, the culture, the heritage, and most of all, the people. In the course of my initial visit, I was introduced to a remarkable woman named May El Khalil. She's the founder of the Beirut Marathon, which has grown into the largest running event in the entire Middle East. In 2015, May invited me to run the marathon, and I jumped on the chance to return to Beirut. Burrito bowls, water, small set of water. My impression of the Middle East had been historically informed by mainstream media as this very unsafe, dangerous corner of the world where tensions run high and anything can happen anywhere at any time. What I found instead was this incredibly beautiful, dynamic city overflowing with history and teeming with warm and sophisticated people with tremendous hope and resolve for a better Lebanon. Sure, the city is far more threadbare, worn, war-torn, and strife-riddled than its pre-Civil War Paris of the Middle East heyday in the mid-1960s, but it remains this truly incredible place. Pretty jet-lagged, but I'm gonna go out for a run. In a cab. Where are we going? I don't where know. Where are we going? Where are we going? This is Isabel. Hi, Isabel. Are you running the marathon on Sunday? Isabel, what are you running? One time. Your first time. Me too. Awesome. Give me five. So there's a lot of people who've been asking me, why are you going to Beirut to run a marathon? You could run a marathon anywhere. Like why Beirut? The reason that I'm here is that because I believe that running can change the world. I believe that running can be a very powerful instrument of peace, particularly in a place like Lebanon, where strife, both political and religious, uh, runs deep and has been going on for a very long time. It's wonderful. Hello, Rich. It's wonderful to have you with us. For one day a year, we truly stand united, and that's when the marathon takes place. An avid runner herself, May was inspired to start the marathon after a near fatal accident left her in a coma. Countless surgeries, hospitalized for two years, she would never run again. But the resolve from this personal struggle motivated her to give the gift of running to a city and a country itself struggling to survive. I needed to dream big. I needed something to take me out of my pain, an objective to look forward to. Sunni, Shia, Armenian, Palestinian, Egyptian, Syrian, Jordanian, American, you name it. 30,000 runners from all walks of opposing political, cultural, and religious perspectives congregate annually, set aside their differences, and just run. A literal, moving peace procession. And when the gunfire went off, this time it was a signal to run in harmony. It is a platform for hope and cooperation in an ever fragile and unstable part of the world. From Boston to Beirut, we stand as one. After all, peacemaking is not a sprint. It is more of a marathon. We begin in Lebanon where the Islamic State has claimed responsibility for one of the worst attacks to hit Beirut in years. Panic and confusion in Beirut. As of last count, has killed at least 43 people, wounded over 200 more. The deadliest bombings to hit the country it's since the end of the Civil War, damage, 25 years ago. Russia. 
Just two days after the marathon, violence returned to Beirut when ISIS attacked a neighborhood just down the street from my hotel. It was a neighborhood I had walked through just a few nights prior. I was devastated. Beirut was no longer this distant, foreign, unrelatable place that just pops up on CNN from time to time. It was real, and its people were my friends. Because that's what travel does. It breeds empathy. But when I reached out to my new friends to make sure they were okay, I was met not with despair, but with an even firmer resolve to forge unity. To echo May El Khalil, making peace truly is a marathon but it is a marathon well worth running.